Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today we're going to talk about Rolex movements. And uh, this is one of the subscribers said, uh, would you do something on uh, Rolex movements? In particular, I think it was the Sky Dweller that, uh, that they wanted to hear about. And uh, man, <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to even begin to approach the uh, Rolex movement. And so I thought, well, I'll take a look at it. And uh, it turns out that it wasn't quite as difficult as I had feared. There are a couple main uh, movements, sort of core movements, you might say, or core bases. Uh, there's one in particular that's even more core than the other. And uh, this is the uh, caliber, what's called the caliber 3130. And it's a base for more movements than any of the other ones that Rolex has, or at least the models, I don't know, in terms of actual numbers. Uh, the Submariner is a pure 3130. Now, most of them, as you're going to see, are part of a, a sort of a family tree. And, and so what I did, I thought, well, um, <laughs> I'll treat it like Ancestry.com, except I, uh, I called it uh, Rolextry.com. And so let's take a look at, at the calibers and sort of look at the, the heritage and sort of the lines, if you will. Now, uh, the first one is uh, the caliber 3130. And it has one, two, three, four, five, six, what we'll call children uh, movements and three grandchildren movements. All right, so uh, let's look at this. So you have the 3130 and then on the far left over there, you have the uh, 3135. And the 3135 has three children, so to speak, or grandchildren, I guess, of 3130, uh, the, the 3175, 3136, and then the 9001. I have no idea why, why they came up with that number, but they did for the, uh, for the uh, Sky Dweller uses that particular movement. I haven't put in all the movements. That's, I, it would just look like a dog pile of watches if I did that. I just want to have a some examples and I am by no means um, an expert on, on Rolex, but I like movements a lot. I can, I can talk halfway decently about different movements. Now the thing about these um, that you have, what I decided to do, and this is simply to make it simple for me, is that if you, the, there are all kinds of versions with different reference numbers and so you'll have the same watch over time, the reference numbers will change and so forth. So what I tried to do is to take the newest ones. And so these are ones that are as new as I could find, okay? All right, so, uh, so a couple other ones. Now, the one of the, uh, the entry level uh, uh, watch is Oyster Perpetual. And uh, it has a 3132 movement. Again, this is derived with a base of a 3130. Uh, the Cellini Dual Time has one that's called the uh, 3180. So you have, uh, but they all have the same base in the caliber 3130. So this is the most common movement and uh, movement base in all of the Rolex watches. This next one uh, that has several uh, different uh, levels is the caliber 3035. It has three children and one grandchild movement. The, uh, I think the 3055 are some of the older ones because I couldn't find any of the newer ones with the 35, uh, 3055. And uh, there were the ones, uh, in fact, I don't, even know if there were any that they're still making that had the 3035, but rather it was one of the ones that used the 3035 as a base. Uh, one of the most common ones was the 3235, 
uh, both the Sea Dweller and the Date Just 41 uh, both have that particular movement. Now, the one grandchild movement, the 3285, is used by the GMT Master II. And uh, so here you, you can see compared to the, um, uh, the what was it, the 3031, 30, <laughs> get to the, the um, the 3130 compared to the 3130 as a base this this one has far fewer and there's far fewer watches with that okay let's continue with our, our rolex 3. Uh, now some watches have their own movement so to speak they have a movement that is not related to any other movement uh, at least according to where i was digging up and watch base.com and uh, caliber corner and all of these other places where i could find out about uh, calibers uh the explorer 2 has a caliber 3187 like i said this is not sort of out there by themselves the um uh, daytona cosmograph uh that one has a 4130 in it which is is a, a unique movement some of the ones uh, I, I found all kinds of stuff including a uh, Zenith El Primero uh, in one of the older uh, Daytonas. And uh, finally, uh, the in terms of the different uh, movements, the Yacht Master II has a caliber 4161. Now this is a really, uh, this is a watch I happen to like a lot. It has a programmable countdown and this is for regattas and the countdown and the boats get up and then they then they boom, they're off, and then it goes the other way around. It's really cool. I like it a lot. Uh, and this has a, what they call a mechanical memory, and what's the on-the-fly synchronization, stop seconds for pre uh, precise time setting. Uh, again, this is, a, this is a watch. I like everything about it. I like the looks of it. I like the movement in it. I, just, I even tried one on, and I liked it when I did. All right, uh, so now let's take a little closer look at the movements. Is that what they call a Rolex perpetual movement? It's, I'm not sure why they call it that, but these are the characteristics that the Rolex uh, list. They talk about their COSC certified, which means that they're uh, certified as chronometers. They have a large variable inertia balance wheel now, a large balance wheel is something, I, another thing I like a lot. Uh, Kerry Vu and Lana has these huge balance wheels. The bigger the balance wheel, the greater the inertia, which means the greater the stability. Uh, it has a hairspring with what they call a Rolex overcoil that looks exactly like a Breguet overcoil, but who's to say, right? Now, the one, the, I don't know if this is their newest one or it's sort of been around for a while, but it, they have, it's made of niobium and uh, zirconium. Now I know of a, an older one, I thought that was, it was niobium and zirconium, I think. Uh, but this one I like a lot better. Uh, zirconium is not a silicon, <laughs> it's not related to silicon at all. It's got a four hertz frequency, 28,800, uh, yeah, 28,000 uh, vibrations per hour. Uh, it has what's called a transversing balance bridge. I'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, they have a self winding via the perpetual rotor. Now this perpetual rotor was developed by Rolex in 1931. They have Rolex made lubricants. They make their own lubricants, something. They have what they call refined finishing. If you look at it, uh, some of the ones here, they it's not too fancy. <laughs> uh, they have nice uh, beveling, they have perlas on most of the flat surfaces and some um, uh, satin polishing on it. Uh, they have what's called a paraflex shock absorber and then they have a high capacity barrel. Now. Some of these are are newer and some aren't, and that's so. Bear with me on this. the um, The new one that they they talk about is the caliber thirty two fifty five, and uh, we need to uh, take a look at it first. 
Now this caliber has what, these are all the different things. I put some little labels up there. You can see the uh, transversing balance bridge. This gives you more stability than the uh, uh, your typical balance cock. Uh, this one, my, my outlaw movement, uh, has that um, same kind of thing, and, and, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, right, right down here near the bottom, it's basically a bridge that uh, the bridge goes something like this, and then right in the middle here they put the, um, uh, the, the center of the balance wheel, and it gives it stability. I've seen it in in other movements, and it's it's some some of uh, call a butterfly bridge. Others I've heard call a Batman bridge. Uh, so it, it it's 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 I guess it's, it's an okay bridge. Um, some of my watches have it, some don't. I I uh, can't say much more. There's a balance wheel now. The balance wheel. Boy, I I like the big balance wheel uh, that Rolexes use because uh, they have higher inertia, greater stability. So that's a real plus as far as I'm concerned. Uh, on the right up there, there's uh, you can see the niobium and zirconium hairspring. It's blue, and with with the overcoil. I didn't talk about <laughs> whether it's Breguet or Rolex overcoil, but. There it is. Now they have something that's uh, called a variable inertia balance with uh, four gold microstella nuts. Um, th this is a good thing, and you need some you need uh, some real talent watchmaker to to adjust those. Essentially, the um, the variable inertia is by screwing in the, the, well, moving the nuts either toward the inside or toward the outside. And this will change the, the inertia to a very fine degree. And so that's what, what that is. And this is not something that hasn't been around for a while, uh, but it's nice to have, it, it, uh, except when it comes to making adjustments. They uh, in the now this is notice that this is for the uh, caliber thirty two fifty five, so, uh, a, a lot of the caliber thirty two fifty five is brand new according to what they say, and other things have been around for a while. Okay, uh, one of the things is uh, a new thing that they have the high capacity uh, barrel and. The high capacity barrel means that they can get more uh, mainspring and have it last longer. So you have a so you have a longer charge with that. One thing that I found extremely interesting is the new Rolex escapement. They call it a Chronergy escapement, and they compare the their other watches. This is something if you go to the uh, Rolex site and you start looking at their movements and stuff. Most of them show the traditional Swiss lever escapement um, with the larger pallet forks and the traditional uh, escape wheel that they have there. Here, though, the new one in the caliber 32 uh, 55 is a very interesting one. And uh, they, they call it the chronergy, like energy, chronergy escapement. And that they're able to make the whole mechanism lighter, which decreases the inertia. And for the escapement, uh, that can be a good thing. So this is this is something that is apparently pretty new. Uh, the uh, 3255, uh, let me see where that is, 32, I have all my notes here. Uh, the 3255 is in the day date, and the I think it's the the, the newest day date, and the and it's called. Let me see what is the day date. Um, I think it, it's 39. I think it might be a, a 41 millimeter. I'm not sure, but.
But anyway, that's the only watch that's in right now. And it's, uh, it's uh, to me, it's, it's, a, it's really an interesting thing. Now, in terms of anything new uh, with the, the whole escapement apparatus, uh, the last time that something really new happened was with George Daniels and his coaxial escapement and some modifications that were made by Roger Smith. And other than the Omega and, and a few other watches, you don't see a lot of them. And this one is is sort of a, is a continuation of the Swiss lever escapement with a number of changes. Uh, it still uses the, the pallet fork and so forth, but it has them offset at an angle. And it uses uh, thinner uh, pallets, uh, ruby pallets, that connect with the escape wheel. It's something I think that's uh, very interesting. There may have been another video on it if you're if you're interested in that. I <laughs> but I I didn't take a look at it. I was just sort of wondering. Well, that's sort of interesting uh, kind of stuff they're doing. Now listen, I have a, for for you Rolex experts out there, your Rolex fans, this is simply an overview. Like I said, it's sort of like more of an Ancestry.com with a very shallow <laughs> going back, trying to do it with the newer movements, newest movements possible uh, that I had. I, I want to take something still in production. Now, there's one other movement I didn't uh, mention my very favorite it is rolex and it's not made anymore and that's in the rolex prints all of these other movements are automatics i don't think they have any hand wound unless i miss something they may have but i didn't i don't remember seeing any they also uh, rolex uh, talks about how they use the same kinds of standards and i think they also use some interchangeable parts and there were things like that i mean a pallet fork is a pallet fork it's a very interesting kind of thing if you want to follow up on it if you're a rolex fan or you own a rolex um i would i would definitely compare what's in your watch with what's in the new caliber 3255 because uh, if that's the direction that rolex is going i think it's a very interesting one Okay, well, I'd uh, really like to hear your comments. You can tell me I was wrong about half the stuff with the movements. That's fine. Uh, I Because I, I'm very interested in that. I can learn something myself from it. But um, anyway, let's hear what you have to say. Uh, and until Sunday, we have a really interesting uh, review. This is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. By the way, too, on Saturday, uh, let's have this part of our live stream. We'll talk about Rolex movements. Hope to see you then.